Good evening. Welcome to Santa Cruz Christian Fellowship's Wednesday Night Bible Study. Tonight's lesson is an encore presentation given last year by Deacon Matt and Sister Patrice Gatewood on effective money management. This lesson is especially helpful for our young people and those who need some basics on money management. So we invite you, enjoy the Lord this evening, and we'll be back at the conclusion. So if you're spending most of your money at the beginning of the month and then at the towards the end of the month, if you're someone who gets paid semi-monthly and you get paid again later in the month and you have this big chunk of money, you think you got a lot of money, but you really don't. So we want to look at those dates and something um, which we'll get to um, a little later. I will talk about how to change those dates because you can. Um, but I want to give you an example. So the example is your auto loan payment. Let's say it's due on the first of the month, but you also have rent due on the first. Um, you want to call the lender and tell them you'd like to see if you can adjust your due date. For the, because it's it's too close. And you tell them, hey, I got a mortgage that's due on this day. Can we change this due date to a later time? If you give them, you tell them 14 days, I guarantee you they will say, okay, we can do that. Without penalty. They'll, they Without will penalty. do it. They will much rather you set up a plan like that to say that because your commitment to pay hasn't changed. It's just when you pay. So they'll do it. They don't offer that kind of information to you but they'll do it. So you want to call them and, and ask them to do that. Um, but keep in mind, you have to balance your expenses through the month. You don't want to, it's, you don't want to spend 90% of your income to cover the beginning of the month and then 10% to cover the second half of the month. That's all you have is 10% worth of expenses because your likelihood to spend that money that you think you have is you'll do it. You're going you're gonna to start to impulse spend or impulse shop because you feel it's so tight that you, you're frustrated and then you'll just go use a credit card or you'll go use something or, or you'll borrow money that has payback consequences. You know, think about it real simple. And I know some of you, you know, this is going to be real elementary for you, but just, just bear with us for a moment. If you get $1,500 at the beginning of the, your first pay cycle, and out of everything that you owe in your expenses and your debt, you have to pay $1,400. You have $100 to last you to the next pay cycle, to the next payday. You're not going to survive. Not in comfort and not without creating more of a problem for yourself. So when we talk about calling companies and setting that up, that's why we say do something very simple as put it on a calendar and look at the dollar amounts, put it on a calendar that that reflects your pay cycle. So you put when you receive money on there and you say, okay, before I received my first installment, what do I owe? And how many days before that do I get the money? And then you schedule that out and then you look at the second half so that instead of spending $1,400 in the beginning, you're going to spend maybe 700, 650, you know, somewhere around there. So you say, okay, now I have the rest for everything else I need to do that's important, including putting something away. Because if you don't have it to put away because you haven't managed this whole debt portion of it, you're not going to put it away. And then when, like we said, when you get that large chunk, what you believe is a lot, you know, I, I hit it big every time the 21st comes. I hit it big. And then I go and hit it big. And come the 28th, I have nothing again. Right. And then you're scrambling and it's a, it's an endless cycle. You don't get out of that cycle until you do something about it, but there are ways to do something about it. So now we're going to talk about debt recovery and how do you get out of debt? Well, let's talk about some reasons why people stay in debt. They stay in debt to keep up appearances. Um, they stay in debt because they think they don't make enough money or they stay in debt because they're unwilling to make a sacrifice or they stay in debt because their spouse isn't on the same page. One of you is thinking we got a lot of, we're good. And the other one is like, we have money for shoes. Yeah. <laughs> My point being, you two aren't on the same page. So you got to get on the same page if you're, if you're, if you have a partner. Um, and they're most times people aren't managing their money. They're not looking at what they really spend on a monthly basis. So they don't know. So they just are just out there 
writing checks. I got this bill. I got to pay it. I got this. I got to pay. I got this. I got to pay without knowing what they really, really have. So it's important. So like I said, if you don't have Quicken, QuickBooks or some kind of accounting software, you don't have to have it. You can do this via Excel. All of these creditors, banks make it really simple for us to be able to download that activity and, and see what we're really spending. Even some creditors will even itemize it for you. They will put it in a nice little pie chart for you and say, you spend a lot of money eating out. It's where the bulk of your money is because they know what those those vendors are that come across your credit card every time you swipe. Does anyone in here without raising a hand, but just think about it. If you live, because people do this, they live off of their credit card and try to pay it off at the end of the month. The one time you don't do that, yeah, you're, you're going to eat it because you're going to end up paying. Meaning if the one time you don't pay it all off, it's going to hurt. Long term. Long term, it will hurt because you're going to end up paying interest on that every month until it's paid off. So we want to get out of that cycle. Um, so we're going to talk about some no-nos. Let's not do. These are do not, <laughs> do not do um, if you are in a debt recovery stage. Um, don't get a payday loan. They sound good. They make it look good on TV. They got all the little, the title max commercial, you know, bring your car, you're going to lose your car. Don't do it. Um, those are very high interest rate loans and people get sucked into it. And now with those type of loans, they're also attached to scams. So you don't want to get attached to those kind of loans, those payday advance loans, because the second you do that, you're going to be paying ridiculous amounts of interest just to get out of that. And remind, and just a reminder, they have attached it to your check. So they're coming to get their money in, which they will collect. So because you've agreed to it, they will come and collect. So don't get into those. Those are nine times out of 10 unrecoverable. Um, don't get another credit card to cover expenses. That's bad. We don't want to get another one and create the same uh, cycle. Um, don't spend what you haven't received. Those of us that receive bonuses, uh, Christmas bonuses, people get those all the time, tax refunds, Christmas gifts, gifts, all that stuff. Don't spend what you haven't gotten. So we don't want to, oh, I'm getting my refund check. It's coming, but you're already spending. Don't do that. We, we don't know if it's coming or not. You know, the way um, the IRS works is they may... Their system may crash. Send it to war. They, it's covered with war. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in today's age, you just don't know. You don't know. So you'd never want to spend what you don't have. And do not incur other debt. You don't want to incur more debt when you're trying to recover from debt. Those of, you, those of you like us that have young teenagers that are just getting into this expense market and, you know, er, earned income and how to manage that and what to do with it. You have to tell them, don't do that. Absolutely do not start spending money in anticipation of receiving stuff. Every creditor they talk to, that's what they sell to them. You can have it now and pay me later. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. buy it now and no payment for a year. Right. Interest free for a year. You know what happens at day 366 or 67 this year? 66. 66 this year. You know what happens? <laughs> 65. Thanks. I, I was too ahead of myself. The full interest is due on that first day past the year. Mm -hmm. The full interest for the year. Yeah, we have to make sure we tell our young people. Ma'am, to the back, please. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. Her question was, what if you already have a title max loan? You're already in credit card debt. Um, how do you get from up under the water? And it's coming. So back to what I was saying, we were talking about our young people. It's just important that we share with our young people because especially as they turn, before they even turn, like right at that 18 cusp, they start to get the credit card offers like 
like they sell in vape flavored vape. So we want to make you sure. Need this. Yeah, they don't need it. So we want to make sure. And then when we go into the stores, every time you go into any retailer, they will offer some sort of credit card to you. Hey, you know, if you apply for this, even if you don't qualify, I love that one. Even if you don't qualify, you're going to get 15%. That's it's it's a pitch to put you in 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 debt and we don't need that and they certainly don't need that at, at not starting off they've got bigger problems <laughs> so um moving on we're going to talk about uh recognizing the season that we're in now i have to share with you because i love my my radio pastor um he talks he has a funny line um that he shares about if you're in an oscar meyer baloney season recognize your season, enjoy your bologna. Don't try to be in a cheesecake factory season because <laughs> they're not there. And you have to recognize that. So recognize where, where you are, where if you are truly in a peanut butter and jelly, that's what you, that's where you are. Be in that peanut butter and jelly and be content in that because it's going to take some discipline from you, just like anything else that you do. It's going to take some preparation from you to, in order to get out of debt. It doesn't happen overnight. So we have to have some self-control. It's hard, but we got to do it. So some alternative ideas for us that are in a peanut butter, jelly, bologna season, a cup of noodle season. It's okay to be in that season. Um, you, If you have to go to the movies, go to matinee. You don't need to go at prime time, okay? That'll save you some money. Um, some of us that are students, use your student ID. It helps. Um, the senior citizen. Okay. Use that. It'll help. Uh, if, if you have to go out to dinner, share a meal. You, you guys want to go out on that date. You guys are insistent that we need to have a date night. Share the meal. If, if you're taking food home from the restaurant, you're spending too much money. Yeah. We could also read a book. Except for the movies and the popcorn because <laughs> no, you, you're spending too much money. That's that's the truth of it. If you're taking food home, you're spending too much money. You went there to eat there. Right. Read a book. Play a board game. Go to the park. These are all free 99. These are things that we can do to kind of help curb um, our appetites for entertainment while we're in a season of trying to recover. Go to your church friend's house. Yeah, fellowship. There's an idea. No, I, 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 I don't think anyone in here or anyone in our congregation is going to say, are you coming over because you're short on cash this month? Yeah. No. Not going to happen. Hey, let's get together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Saves everybody. Yep. So I want to share with you this really um, short uh, example of how changing your behaviors can change your outcome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. I liked it because I thought, well, oh, that's real and it's relatable to where we all are. Um, so two families, identical in size, income and living expenses, sit down one weekend to look over the family budget. Each family wants to know when $2,500 will be available for a family vacation. Each family spends the same amount per month on savings, entertainment, food, utilities, auto expenses, and rent. But the Garcias decide they can go on a vacation in nine months, whereas the Ames family decides it's going to take them 13 months to, to save the money. On the surface, it appears that it should take the, both families the same amount of time to save $2,500. So... What accounts for the difference? Well, the Garcias decided to include entertainment in their budget in their savings plan, adding an additional $100 a month to their vacation more than the other family. So this allowed them to save up the money sooner than the other family. So changing a small habit can really change the outcome of your situation. That's just on the savings portion. But more importantly, we want to talk about debt. Um, so I, I know you guys have, have heard this, and there's some parts that, you know, everybody's going to pick up something, I hope. That was our prayer. If you have a goal for 2020, a financial goal, if you don't put it as a priority after your, your tides, if you don't establish that 
as a priority, you will never achieve it. And if it really is something you want to do, you have to sacrifice some of the other trendy, fun, um, routine mm -hmm. things. I'll tell you, prior to Patrice and I getting together, even dating, I pay $6 three times a day for coffee. That was my norm. At work, you're not, Rev knows, and we mentioned it last time a little bit, it's a $20 day if you don't bring your own meal for food. I still cook, but I take my lunch. Even if it is a lunch meat sandwich, I take it and I enjoy it more than I do driving down the street or walking around to get the sandwich. I take my own coffee and it's good coffee. Some of it is Keurig, but that's when I'm really, I'm doing it then because Keurig, <laughs> that little cup of coffee and Keurig is a lot more expensive than making a 12 cup of, you know, whatever brand you like, you know, in, in your coffee pot. And then we both get out of it and we probably spent a dollar on that 12 cup pot that we make. So you have to make, it's all about your discipline and your choice to make a change, whether it's to pay something off or to do something extra. You have to make the decision, and that's the only way it's going to happen. You're praying about it, and then you're acting on it. It will not just happen. All right, let's talk about credit cards. So according to uh, CNBC, the average American household, that's a whole family, has about $38,000 just in credit card debt alone. Um, it, and I want you to consider this. So you guys think about this outside of here. If you're spending more than 10%, you know what you, how much you make a month. If you're spending more than 10% of your monthly income to credit cards by themselves, you need to strongly consider paying them off. That's a lot of money that you're putting towards that. Um, if you have multiple credit cards and uh, you, you want to pay off the, uh, the card with the highest interest rate first, um, and you start paying that down. That means that you're paying the minimum on everything else, um, but the high interest rate credit card, you're paying something a little bit more to that. Um, and then this will bring this expense down over time, and then it'll be eventually paid off, and then you'll want to move on to the next highest uh, interest credit card. Um, that will save you. Um, what she said, she didn't say take all your credit cards and start trying to send all the money and paying them all off. You're going to do that one month, and then you're going to be frustrated, and you're not going to do it again. She's saying prioritize it. There's one that has – everyone in here may or may not have a credit card, but you're familiar with what the interest rate is on those things. You know. And I'll tell you real quick, uh, I used to work for ITT Financial before I got onto the fire department, and we did loans. I gave someone a 49% loan. They needed money for the next two weeks. Oh, no problem. 49% interest. That is legal. If you it sign was, it, I'll give it to you. Was. It was legal. Was legal. Now they have a 30 or something like that restriction. I don't think restriction. it's 30 anymore. But most of the credit cards, 12 to 20, anywhere in between there, depending on if you've been a longtime customer, you know, mm -hmm. we'll give you the 12. But if you haven't been or if you've ever gone over your limit, that goes up. So the other thing with the credit cards, um, you can call your creditor and ask them to negotiate a, a better rate. The worst thing they can tell you is no, but they will entertain it if you call them, especially if you have a good payment history. If you're at least making that minimum payment consistently and you call them and say, hey, you know, I'd like to negotiate a, a lower interest rate. They will entertain it, especially once you throw out, you know, I, but do your homework first. You want to you want to find out what the going rate is for credit cards um, at the time. And then you want to tell them, hey, you know, Discover is offering uh, to transfer this this balance. I'm not telling you to transfer the balance and I'll get to that in a second. But you want to tell them that, hey, you know, they're offering to do it for no interest for two years and no transfer fees. You have to be very specific, um, and the creditors will either say, 
mm, let me get back to you or no, but ask. So you'll know how, again, how to prioritize which cards you're going to be paying off. But I want you to be aware that when you do these balance transfers, if you're going to entertain the idea of doing a balance transfer, you have to know if they're going to charge you a transfer fee. There's a lot of hidden fees in that. There's these nice, enticing 0% for a year, all these, we'll care, we'll even send you the check so you can pay off your other credit card or they charge these other weird fees that they throw in there um, just to get you to transfer your balance to them and then you're now on top of the interest that you will end up paying you're also paying some additional uh, fees with that uh, creditor so if you have gone through all of your income and your expenses you balanced everything evenly through the month and you still don't have enough to cover that's when you need to consider consolidating your debt at that point it's time to start consolidating um, because you just don't have enough to cover it. And it, that happens too. You know, sometimes it's not, it's, it truly is. You don't make enough money to cover. You can do a, a, a couple of things. You can either contact your, if you have a credit union, uh, a lot of credit unions do what's called like a signature loan or installment loan where they offer some kind of, it's a, it's a lower interest rate. It's much lower than a, than a credit card, but you can get a, or a line of credit with the, either your credit union or your bank. Uh, they will do it and you can pay off your credit card. So now you have one payment, but that minimum payment may be, if it was, if you had to combine all your credit cards were like $1,200, it may come down to like six six hundred seven hundred dollars now, now earlier we told you you know hey don't go out don't go out and get one of these uh, you know, these companies that you know hey give me your car and i'll put a loan on this is a scenario where if that's what you have as your asset and you have these things that are choking you out these other bills that are choking you out then you do that because you're going to take if you have credit cards or you know this happens to students just getting out of college all the time. They come out and they have four or five loans. And those four or five loans all have, you know, 15% interest. Well, you know, that's somebody else do the math because I think that's a bit high for me. That's 60% interest really, you know, that you're paying if you look at all the calculations of them. There's no loan you're going to get that's going to be that. So you would go and get one loan that still may be high. It still may be at the 10% or the 9% or the 12% mark, but you still saved your money saved yourself money as long as it's lower than the lowest one you had. You get me? And that's worst case scenario. That, yeah, that's when no, none of the other stuff that she talked about works. And you're, and you're just, they're all knocking on the door. Yeah. What you don't want to do is get in the habit of having these payments become late. Because once they become late, now you're paying late fees and once you hit that 30 day mark and then the 60 day mark, now you are ruining and affecting your credit. Um, in addition to your credit being um, having a high debt to income ratio, you're now making yourself look like you can't be someone who could be trusted with money. So because that's what lenders are looking for. They're looking to see your willingness to pay back. So you want to make yourself marketable by having low debt to income ratio and you want to be someone who pays on time because it says you can be trusted. So when you're in a position to um, let's say that you have a bunch of old debt, a lot of times our credit reports reflects a lot of medical collections. We see liens on there. We see um, a lot of old credit from when we were young and you know where I'm going. Um, so we, we have a lot of retail credit. We got a lot of other kind of debt that was on there that's been on there for a long time and you can't, you can't shake it. You, here are some options that I've, um, that I brought. Uh, the first one that, that I, that I put on here is one that uh, my husband and I use. We used American Credit Repair. Um, this company gave us some, some, we told them what we wanted to do because we were getting ready to purchase a house and we wanted to remove some negative, um, items from our credit report and we needed to do it within, I think it was 90 days. This guy did it in 45 days for us and our credit scores went up significantly. Um, and, and this was just like old, like, 
literally retail credit from when I was 18. And mine from a significant life change that I had. I was divorced. But it doesn't have to be because you want to go buy something like a house, which it would be great because then that would be a really good thing for you. But even if it's now you need to try to get a loan to get out of that debt you're in and you can't qualify because of all these other things that are really easy. It's easy for them to do. Now, some people will go, oh, I'll do it myself and I can call these companies. You have to know what to say to this company and you have to know when to say it and how frequent to say it because that's what it is. Almost every credit card company or creditor makes an error mm -hmm. in how they bill, how they charge, how they, and that's what they get them on. You're not cheating them, but they're overcharging you or they did something wrong and how they're supposed to bill you and the agreement that you had with the cycle and signing and all that stuff. There's an error in it and you're not at fault for that. And they find that for you and they fix those problems for you where they have to clear that off of your credit. You're still paying these companies, yes, but they can't report negative stuff about you because they're making the error themselves. And that's what you want off of there so that when you do go to this company and you want to buy that thing for yourself or, or you want to put this away for the future, you're able to do that stuff. I, I found it to be very helpful, um, especially because you want to find a company that if you're going to take this route and have them, you know, fix your credit and reach out to these creditors and clean it up, um, have a goal in mind. And you want them to be able to 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 come and to understand that goal that you have in mind and to be able to deliver it. Um, so the fees on on this this particular company, I think it was maybe seven hundred dollars uh, to get it uh, to get one of us repaired. Um, and we didn't do it both at the same time. We did it individually. He was first because he was worse. So <laughs> so, uh, but it, that's an option for us. It was about buying the house and, and making sure that we didn't have anything negative and we wanted to make sure that we got a really good rate on the house and because it was it was a long term investment for us, so that was important to us. These other companies, I just did some research on them, and I liked their ratings. I did not pull up any um, any ones that have these monthly fees because anything that's attached to monthly fees is probably a way for them to get more money out of you, and that's just that just wasn't reasonable. So, yep, the. The last thing we want to talk about is we want to uh, talk about a challenge uh, for you all, which we are also going to participate in. Um, how, how many of us out there, and, and, and I would like crowd participation on this, how many of you out there have a financial goal for 2020? You've established something that you want to do, something you want to, you, you want to prepare for. Okay. So this is kind of a little step towards something like that. Okay. It's uh, what, what we're going to ask you to do is not going to make you a millionaire, but it's going to help you form that discipline. And it's going to help you look at what you want to really do uh, in life financially and start moving in that direction. So I'm going to ask that you all send me a thousand bucks. So and I'll pray over you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm going to send you a prayer blanket. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I couldn't help that. Rev told me to say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So here it is. It's the fifty dollar challenge for twenty twenty. Um, every pay cycle for this entire year. That means that if you are paid uh, weekly, there's fifty two weeks in the year. Um, those of us that are paid twice a month, we are looking to put away. $50 of your pay. That is your net pay. Okay. So that's the money you get to take home. Put that in an account that is separate from your main operating account. So your main operating account is where all you, where all your bills are paid, all your expenses are paid. We don't want that money. We want it separate because if you leave it in that account, guess what you're going to do? You're going to spend it. So, and it's $50 and think about what you spend $50 on frivolously. Now, if you don't uh, have the ability to get an account that's not going to charge you for a minimum balance, then go old school mm -hmm. and put it in a little jar or under a little your, bank. Under your mattress. 
and let me know where you live. <laughs> but put it somewhere that it only goes in there. Nothing else goes in there, and no one else goes in there. It's not, oh, I need to go um, get laundry detergent, and you go and grab it. It's not that money. It's not that. This is serious. This is how you're going to determine if you're going to be able to discipline yourself to move to the bigger things. Houses aren't cheap. Mm -mm. Down payments aren't going to get any lower. Unless you want to go serve in the military and get a VA loan. You know, but we'll see in six years, maybe. Unless you're going to change some way that you're going to get some kind of subsidy. You're going to have to do it yourself with prayer. But you're going to have to discipline yourself, just like you have to discipline yourself for anything else. You have to start somewhere. We're asking that you take the challenge and start with this. $50 in a bank account or in just a container somewhere. And, and we're going to ask that you let us follow up with you. Say, did you put it in there? And we're going to ask that you hold yourself accountable in the sense that if for some reason, for whatever reason, you are not able to do that $50, Write down why you're unable to do that. You don't have to give it to us, but we put want it in that container. Put it in that container because something about you writing it down or that that level of conviction is going to help you. I um, didn't. I didn't put it in there because I'm I went with my friends to Vegas. Mm -mm. So if you're paid monthly, at the end of this, you should have about six hundred dollars, and if you're paid semi monthly, you should have about twelve hundred dollars. Um, so we have a sheet. Um, you guys are welcome to write your name on there so we can follow up with you. We'd love to find out what happens in January 2021. If we made it through the challenge, again, Matt and I, we uh, both have, well, I have a real I know job. I can hold mine. Um, so we, 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 I am going to do it. So we're <laughs> both going to do it, and you guys can hold us accountable to it as well. Um, and lastly, before we open it up for questions. Just want to thank you guys for the opportunity tonight. Um, if you have questions that you don't feel comfortable sharing in this forum that's open, I left my email address. It's on the handout that you guys received tonight. Uh, if I don't have the answer, I'm, I will research it for you and I will get back to you. Um, I have tons of resources. I see this every day. I have clients that are poor money managers and they have to have somebody to pay their bills for them because otherwise they'd be in trouble. So, and, 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 and uh, I know we're getting close cause we set a timer and Rev starts doing like this to us. Um, along with setting that up, uh, I'll tell you, um, Patrice is sworn to secrecy or, um, um, confidentiality with her clients. But if she treats their money anything like she treats ours, she can really help you out. Okay? If you do, if you really just don't know what to do, um, or where to start, or where to start, you know, she um, she can do that. She's very busy. I don't know if you guys know my wife is in school, and she's my wife, and <laughs> being my wife, she's my wife, and that's a lot in <laughs> itself. Okay, <laughs> and then she's in school, and then she works full time. And then we have a 17 year old and we have a 21 year old and we, you know, um, and life, but I've seen her sit down with people, but if you come to sit down with her, you can't have secrets. You can't hide, you know, well, you know, I, I this is what I pay, but I, you know, I, if you want help and you want her to org help you organize it, you're going to have to spill the beans. You're going to have to say, this is, this is what I got as an income. We're, we're not recording it. We're not going to go and tell anybody. If you know anything about us, we don't talk to other people about what people talk to us about. As people, we don't do that. And then as Christians and people that pray for other people, we really don't do that. Okay. So if you have a need and we have an ability, seek out that ability to meet your need. Okay. You're not going to hide from Christ if you sinned. So if you if you have an opportunity to be successful somewhere, reach your hand out. You know, but again, she's my wife, so she's busy. And she's in school, so she's busy and she works. But you know, she'll schedule it for you. She'll sit down there um, and, and let her do her thing. Let her help you out. Let her get your stuff straight, so that we all can be. We're supposed to be successful. 
we're not supposed to be struggling other than with our own bodily desires. We're supposed to be in that fight all the time. But we're not supposed to be wondering if I can pay the light bill. We're not supposed to be doing that. Okay? And that's a change in our lives sometimes that we have to make, a transition that we go through. So we're going to open it up to questions. $50 that we're saving, is that to pay off a credit card or is that to use for anything? Uh, Can I, I go on vacation? Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, that, I'm glad you asked that um, because I'm sure that was a question in, in others' uh, mind. It's for whatever you set as your goal, Wh so, whether it's to pay off. If you're, if you're fine and you're paying stuff off, but you go, you know, I never seem to have any money for vacation. Mm -hmm. I never have any money to do something. Here's what we tend to do as people. I can tell you that I did it for many, many years. I get satisfied by, he that means time's up. Um, we, we, we get $20 and we, and we get $20 rich. And I'm gonna take my $20, you know, and I'm, I'm using a small amount because when we're little, that's, I mean, we're, we're, we're rich. You bring in one of these eight year olds, well, not in Santa Clarita, but in Inglewood where I grew up, you know, you get $20, man, you're taking all your buddies to the store with you because you are the man, <laughs> okay? But, you have something that you say, this is what we want to do. If you're married, your spouse and you get together and say, this is what we want to do. Because if there's two of you in the house, it should be two of you in the challenge. If there's two incomes, mm -hmm. there's two incomes. That's two in the challenge. So, and you keep each other at, at, at watch. And that doesn't mean it's, it doesn't go to anything until the very end of the challenge. So if that's a vacation for you or a, um, Something that you've been wanting that you down put payment, for the family. pay something off. It's whatever you choose. And you can change your mind halfway through because your priorities change. This yeah. is just a baseline. You know, maybe next year it's a hundred dollars. You know, it it's getting in the habit. It's it's correct. That's that's the minimum we're asking you to do. Now I, I would tell you if you if you don't do that kind of stuff right now. Don't go, oh, well, I can do 100 or I can do 200. No, do the 50. Do something that you won't even notice. If you have 200 to do it, do the 50. Discipline yourself. Hmm? You can do 25. We're asking you to do 50. But you determine what your challenge You determine what your challenge is. You know, everybody in here, you determine what your level is. The point is to get to a level to where you do it as a regiment and consistently, and you don't waver from it because you have a bigger goal. Today's little goal of, you know, I, I want to get my, my grandbaby something. No, no, they'll be all right. Okay. Any other questions? Is this $50 in addition to your regular savings? No, this would be this would be uh, considered your savings. No, no, no. She, 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 the, the way you're saying it, yes. You have whatever you're doing. And if you, and remember, this is for a, a scenario for if you find yourself that I want to do something more than what I'm doing right now. I know I'm doing okay, so we think, but I want to do more. I want to, I want to give it, put a little more away. So this is, don't put it with the savings account. Right. Don't change your other patterns. Yes. As long as your savings is truly that and Correct. you don't have one of these savings accounts that Correct. I take money out of every month. If your savings account is attached to your credit card or to your visa or your cha your debit card and it's sucking money out because it's your overdraft protection, you've already set yourself up for failure. Because you're saying, I'm going to overdraft my account. If you're already putting some away, you're putting this extra in to say, okay, I'm going to go from January 2020 to January 2021. And I'm going to show that I did that. You mentioned that earlier about having a plan for vacation. So uh, would, would the strategy be, okay, we're going to um, New York next year. And it's going to cost 
uh, $1,500, would the strategy be to put, you know, $120 a month so that you have it? So when you get there that you have the money or do you just save up some money and then go on vacation based on what it is that you have managed to save? If you're planning on going to, you already know in advance that you're planning on going to New York and you know that it's going to cost you $1,500. Let's say it's going to cost you another thousand dollars for, uh, accommodations and food and et cetera, you need to be looking at your budget 12 months out and planning how much you're going to, you're, you already know you need at least 2,500 to do that trip. This is separate. So you need to look at your expenses. You probably need to minimize your entertainment expenses over the next 12 months so that you're able to take that trip without changing too much of your normal if I asked everyone right now, would you rather go every, I'm, I'm going to take everybody one place. So would you rather us all go to Lucille's or to Hawaii? Right. Because you have, you, this is what I want. So if your desire is to go to Hawaii, if your desire is to uh, buy a home, if your desire is to get a new car, whatever your desire is that you're setting out right now, then that's what you schedule and save for. The 50 is just the minimum that if you don't, if, if, if you have looked at everything and you're going, oh, this is so tight, this is so, just do 50. Just right. start disciplining yourself. This is yourself. just a starting point to get you into a pattern of disciplining yourself so that it becomes easier as the goals that you have in mind get bigger because it may be New York this year, but next year it may be Paris, you know? So you want to have built the discipline in you already so that you can, you know what I mean? All right. Any other questions? How, how many of us are close to retirement? And, and we have some form of, uh, yeah, you have some form of IRA, some form of uh, account like that. If you're not going to a seminar or something about how you're going to get that money distributed and all that, this kind of stuff, you really need to. You really need to start thinking about how that's going to be dispersed to you what the taxes are going to be on that stuff, what, what subsidy you're going to need. Because remember, unless that, unless you were independently employed and that's your only source of income, that's going to subsidize whatever you're getting from a company, from a retirement plan that your company has. So you want to look at that kind of stuff and that's all part of it. Because when you set your fixed income, make sure you set it for everything you want. I want to pay this. I want to pay that. I want to pay this. And then every month I want to be able to do something that I like. You have to put your hobby into that. Otherwise, you're going to feel like you worked all your life and now you're choked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you go, why did, why did I work those 30 years? Why did I work till I was 65? Why did I? And now I, I make less money and I feel like I'm more restricted. And you should manage that to where it's set for everything to cover. God bless you. Amen. I pray that that lesson was a blessing for you. Join us again next week as we continue in our series, Back to Basics. And our lesson will be entitled, Faith. So we look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday. Thank you for joining us this week. Have a blessed week in the Lord.